welcome everybody. You get the phone, Maxine. Hello to you again. And let's get to it. Good afternoon. Oh, hello, hello. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Good. How's I'm South Africa? Africa? How are things I'm in South Africa? Africa? Uh, no, things are good. Good. We just have the pandemic here, of course, like everybody else. But otherwise, we're fine. <laughs> All right. Pretty cool. All right. So let's begin. Now that we have said hello to everybody with the presentation. Now, <clears throat> first thing that we need to discuss today is what is the difference between an inductive approach and the difference in an inductive approach? I'm sorry. Okay. So, difference is very simple. In an inductive approach, we always go from the context. So we provide specific examples, whether we're using a board or we're using word or we're using some sort of text to introduce the grammar, an audio, a video, whatnot. And then we go to the general rule. In the deductive approach, which is the traditional approach or, or what we have used for a lot of years, I guess, First, we do the general rule, so we go, okay, subject, verb, uh, auxiliary verb, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and we explain the rule to students. Now, this might be easier, and, and I guess it, it's a swifter way, I mean, to get the message across, but the problem that we have with the deductive approach is that students do not get a chance to figure out things for themselves. Now, what does that mean? That means that from a perspective of uh, Bloom's taxonomy, we teach them or we show them the rules, so we expect them to memorize the rule. Then we want them to understand the rule, and then we want them to apply the rule, and that's about it. So from a deductive approach, we're basically tapping only into lower order thinking skills, okay? Now, what we want to do is we want to reach the higher level thinking skills. We want them to analyze. We want them to evaluate the why. So when we present the grammar in a context first, and then we give them the opportunity to interact and try to figure out the rule for themselves, yes, it might be a little bit more difficult, but we're going to reach you know, great advantages through this. We're going to have them you know, analyzing and figuring out patterns, and that's how human beings learn, by comparing and contrasting different patterns. So if we're talking about the present perfect, then you might ask them, what word do you see repeating itself over and over again? Having has, right? And then you want them to evaluate the why. And of course, then you get to them creating their own examples. And that's pretty much the concept that you learned when you took the course with us. We have them go from structured activities to unstructured activities. So we can reach the higher levels of I mean, higher order um, thinking skills. Now, what are the advantages to, I mean, um, this approach? Well, I would say one of the biggest advantages here would be that students get to really interact. And then you're creating collaborative learning. Students are helping each other. They're figuring it out. Just like in real life, you know, when a child explores uh, his or her world, or even adults, and we start questioning ourselves, and then I ask Ahmed, what do you think? Or I ask Alina, why do you think this verb repeats itself? Or Maxine might say, well, maybe there's a pattern here, right? And then we interact, and then we create learning, and learning becomes much more engaging and much more relatable than just listening to the teacher, you know, explaining grammar rules. Now, believe it or not, this was hard for me to accept at first because I come, you know, from the old school. I started 26 years ago and we, as teachers, were extremely proud of our ability to explain any grammar point, right? And then, you know, we would go to the board and then, okay, today we're going to talk about reported speech and, okay, pay attention. Okay, present goes to past, past goes to past perfect, present perfect goes to past perfect. And then, you know, we thought we were so cool because we would fill up the board, you know, with all these grammatical concepts and students would be, wow, this guy really knows. But there was no learning. Okay. And then we asked ourselves, why is it, yes, that my students are not, you know, getting the point? Uh, and I used this analogy before. That's like me saying to any one of you, let's say, let's pick on someone here. Okay 
me saying to Lee, Lee, I'm going to teach you how to play basketball, all right? Now, Lee, pay attention, please. And I'm going to pull out this board, and I'm going to say, okay, Lee, you need to stand eight feet from the hoop, okay? And as you stand eight feet from the hoop, you need to bend your arms in a specific, you know, 52-degree angle, making sure that the ball has at least 32.5 PSI. And as you launch the ball on an 80-degree angle, what you want to do is apply at least 3.7 newtons of force. So when the ball impacts the board, you know, it impacts with at least 2.2 newtons of force in a 72 degree angle and goes into the hoop. Okay, let me write out the formula for you. And then, you know, I mean, I gave you the theory. Now, here, hoop the ball. And then he's like, uh, newtons, 45, the, what? I mean, <laughs> it's like when you learn him to drive a car, you know? You try to think too much and then you end up crushing. And, and then Lee's gonna be like, Boom. Lee, what happened to you? I explained it to you so well. Why is it that you can't hook the ball? It's the same concept. It's different when I give, Lee, when I give the ball to Lee and I say, okay, try it. Okay, a little higher, a little lower. And then she starts figuring it out. She says, well, maybe I should, you know, use a closer angle. Maybe I should apply more force, right? Maybe the ball is not properly inflated same concept and this is how human learning takes place and for some of us you know from the older school this was hard to accept we'll be like what but 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 i'm not going to teach i'm a teacher yes you're going to teach but you're going to teach them how to find you know the answers themselves uh, sort of like the, the the kung fu series little grasshopper thing you know where the, the pupil would be faced, you know, with different riddles and, and trying to figure out the truth or figure out the road for themselves. And, and that's how learning takes place. And of course, cooperative learning is always better. Now, the second benefit is that students get to tap, like I said before, into higher order thinking skills. And then we have the students, you know, analyzing. We have the students evaluating. We have the students creating, yes? And that's how processes of synapses and processes of metacognition, by the way, metacognition is the process in which an individual learns his or her own, you know, best ways of understanding a concept. That's like uh, how you have some students um, that, that learn, you know, English better by listening to music. Other students, you know, that doesn't work for them. Um, others are very visual, so they need to have little post ups with vocabulary all over the place. Other students will simply, you know, learn best by practicing. So that's when we go into the learning styles, whether they're kinesthetic or whether they're auditive or whether they're visual. That's why when students ask me, James, what's the best way to learn? Should I listen to music at night or should I be, should I write vocabulary down or should I practice speaking? I'm like, well, try them all. See which one works for you. And that's how metacognition happens. And then that's how we get students to create new neuro neurological connections. Um, it's like when you learn to drive a car, you know, at first, you know, you have to think about if you're driving a stick shift, I have a stick shift. I always love stick shift cars. And then the clutch and then the, the gas and then, you know, first gear and then look at the mirror and you have to think about everything. And it's very confusing. And then one day you wake up, you know, you turn on your car, you get in and you're driving and you're not even thinking about it because that process happened in your brain. The, the, that last critical neurological connection took place and now you're doing it basically automatically. Okay, that's synapses, okay? Natalie, I hadn't seen you there. Hello, it's great to have you back. Okay, it's, it's fantastic to see everybody coming back. All right, now the other advantage is that as we teach grammar from, you know, an inductive approach, we're going to reach a deeper level of learning. So, I mean, knowledge is really going to go deep into the brain and it's going to stay there. Um, what is deeper knowledge? Riding a bicycle. Something that you never forget. I recently, you know, started uh, bicycling again. Now that the pandemic, you know, it's, I mean, we're pretty much getting used to all of this stuff and I wanted to do some exercise. Melanie, hello. Hi. Great to have you back. Thank and, you. Um, you know, and I was afraid because I, I haven't been on a bicycle since I'm a teenager and I'm 52 years old, for Christ's sake. And lo and behold, you know, I got on the bike, I took off, and 
It was like, oh my gosh, it's, it's so cool. I remember. That's deeper understanding. That's something that gets embedded in your brain and never goes away. All right? Okay, now that we spoke about the theory, let's get to what you guys like to see, which is the practice. Now, how do I present grammar within a context? Well, there are different ways that you can do it online. Normally, you know, in a classroom environment, you simply tell an anecdote, you're interacting with the students, you engage them, you know, with eye contact, you move around the room, right? You have them participate, but online it works a little bit differently. Here you have to rely on technological tools. Sometimes, yeah, it's cool, you know, to tell cool anecdotes or maybe a joke or maybe some funny, funny story or whatnot, depending on, you know, students that you have. And um, for example, with my business students, I, I would discuss, you know, Harvard Business Review. And we would talk about the seven, you know, uh, different qualities of leadership. And we would go to reading, but it doesn't work that way with everybody, especially with children. Right. So what you want to do, and excuse me one second, because I have a lot of open windows here, is you want to rely on software or you want to rely on, you know, web resources. Uh, you know, I love presentation tools. I can't get enough of them. And I've spoken about these things before. You get them, you know, from different uh, publishing houses. And as a teacher, normally you have contact, you know, with these people. So ask around. Now, this one would be for children. And what I would do in this class, I would introduce the grammar, you know, by using a video. Oh, hold on a second. I made the classical mistake of not activating the sound. Every single webinar, incredible. I know. Melanie's shaking her head and saying, oh, James, what am I going to do with you? Yeah. Tisk, tisk, tisk. All right, here we go. It's a wild world, even for plants and insects. Some bugs are attracted to sweet smelling plants. Mmm, yum! Some bugs are attracted to stinky plants. Rotting, stinky meat! <laughs> Some bugs are tricked by plants. This plant smells sweet too. Uh, oh, oh no! Some bugs are eaten by plants. But not this plant. This plant is eaten by bugs. Sorry, already you can see a pattern here. So I would discuss with my students, okay, what patterns do you see? Well, teacher, um, they're using the word some. We could be talking about, you know, quantifiers, or maybe we're even talking about passive voice here, you know, are eaten, is this, is that. So once you have the discussion and you have your students analyze the patterns, then you can move to the structure. So one of the ways to practice is by having your students try to figure it out with activities like this unscramble activities or maybe fill in the blanks activities, you know, semi-structured activities, okay? So the first one was the structured activity, you know, the video and this and that and the presentation of the language. You can have them maybe practice the dialogue and then have an activity like this. And then you move into providing the examples and the formulas, you know, I mean, sometimes, you know, especially with adult students, it's necessary to show the grammar formulas, but first have them try to figure it out for themselves. And then when they see the structure, when they see the formula, something wonderful happens. And it's what I call the aha moment, right? I like to explain it in a very simple way. Um, for those of you that are not familiarized with Bloom's taxonomy, I'm gonna give you Bloom's taxonomy in 30 seconds, okay? I have this. I tell my students, all right, repeat after me, English, 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 English. Now they remember English. What is English? Uh, it's a language. Now they understand. Can you give me an example with um, the word English? Uh, I speak English, now we apply it. How do I move to higher level thinking skills now? Hmm. Why do you think 83% of the content in the internet is in English? I don't know, teacher. Well, let's look into it. 
let's investigate. Uh, maybe it was because of the expansion of the British Empire that controlled, you know, one third or one fifth of the world, what not. And, you know, all these people, you know, coming to these countries had an impact on the local blah, 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 blah. Or the immigration effect during the, 18th, the, the 19th and 20th century in the United States, the United States becoming a global power. Now you analyzed. Then you evaluate. So what, what was the impact overall? What is the impact of all this content? And then you create, and you could ask him a question like, hmm, so how would the world be if everybody spoke English? And that's when you go, I would be out of a job. <laughs> 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 so that's what I call the aha moment. There you go, Bloom's taxonomy in 30 seconds. Um, many teachers try to explain this to me in the past, and you know, they got too theoretical. Always try to make things, you know, using the triple S. Keep it short, simple, and stupid, and people will understand better, okay? So that's why, or that's what I meant with inductive approach, helping you, help your students reach higher order thinking skills. Okie dokie. Now, before we go into our web resources, um, let me show you other examples on how to present grammar, you know, presentation tools or diverse tools. And in the meantime, as always, I like to invite you to have some pen and paper or Maybe just your cell phone, you know, so you can take a picture or you take a screenshot because some of these uh, web addresses are quite long. And, you know, in the past, um, it was a recommendation by, by one of you to provide you with the web addresses so you could write them down. Okay. 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 So that was an example of maybe how to introduce, you know, grammar to small children. What about teenagers? Well, one of the formats that I prefer to work with uh, when it comes to teenagers is the comic format. Uh, the comic format always works. You know? Well, unless, you know, you have students that are into music or whatnot, you can try different things. So what I would do here is I would start with one of these comic formats or some, some sort of video or some sort of, um, topic that would be engaging to them. Always remember, with teenagers, the content has to be relatable. Relatable to what? The real lives. So, I know you might love Frank Sinatra. I love Frank Sinatra. You know, maybe Ahmed, Alina, Melanie, and I, we love Frank Sinatra, you know, but, I mean, playing my way to a whole bunch okay. of teenagers, um, yeah, that's a beautiful song. It's not going to work, <laughs> okay? And, and as much as I may hate, you know, some of these uh, younger artists, not hate them as persons, but don't really understand their music, you might have to use it and you might have, you know, to get into the groove and, you know, I mean, we are actors after all. Part of being a teacher is, is acting. Anything that you can do to get them engaged, okay? Unit 11, track 2-38. I was jogging when I fell over. Oh, sorry. She was cooking when I... That's the wrong audio. Unit 11, Trek 2-37. Maya, where are you? Hurry up. The movie starts in 15 minutes. Sorry, I forgot to set my alarm. I'm leaving the house now. Why didn't you set your alarm? I was tired. I was reading a comic when I fell asleep. Why were you so tired? I was playing with my younger cousins yesterday. And here I am. Um, Maya, you're still wearing pajamas. I know, I always smile, you know, it's kind of corny, but it's kind of cool. So here, what do you see? I would ask my students, what word do you see repeating itself over and over again? Um, was, that's correct. What other word do you see repeating itself? Or what pattern do you see? Well, I see that some words finish in ing. Yes, of course, we have reading, we have playing. You remember when we use these words? Oh yes, uh, teacher, uh, give me an example of something that you are doing right now. Well, um, I am playing right now. I am, you know, speaking to you right now. Okay, so the same way that we talk about things that we are doing right now, She's referring to things that she's doing right now, or she's referring to things that happened maybe before? Uh, before? Okay, cool. So, 
what is the difference then? Uh, okay, that when we talk about now, we use E's and R, and believe me, don't underestimate your students. Your students are smarter than you think. So as they begin to see these patterns, then you can move into you know the examples, and then you can move into showing them the structure and this and that, and then it works much more wonderfully, all right? Okay, what about older students? Well, you know, James, oh, I have you know these really older grumps, and they're not really you know into you know comic books. Well, then we can go old school. Yes. Okay. You could have a reading about something relatable to your adult students. You know, Bill Gates is one of the richest, most successful business executives in the world, blah, blah, blah. Have used his computer, has always loved working, has written several books. He and his wife, Melinda, have donated a substantial amount. Again, ask your students to look for patterns. Oh, well, uh, we see a lot of half and has here, you know, I mean, but why are some verbs in past, you know, programmed? Is in past? Then you smile and you say, yeah, yes and no. But continue, carry on, you know, have them do the discussion. Then you can show them, you know, you can tell them, yes, this is similar to past, but when we say millions of people have used his computer programs for past uh, three decades, does it say how many times they have used his programs? No. Does it say, you know, exactly when? No. But in, in past, you know, we say when, you know, I, I, I programmed my computer yesterday. So here's different, right? So, I have a question about this. Yes, go ahead, Mel. Um, I forget what you call it, the, what kind of past you call it. This, is the, past, this is the past participle. Okay. So it's a past that is continuing most likely into the present. Yes, it's called can the present perfect. You, right. Thank you. So you can explain this to them? I mean, they're adults, right? Yes, of course, can... of course. Uh, you will explain this to them, but try to have them figure it out first. Okay. And then if I want to explain that concept, then I would say, well, it says that Bill Gates has been the CEO of Microsoft Corporation since 1975. Is he still the CEO? Uh, yes. Ah, okay. So he has written several books. Up to the present? Yes. So him and his wife, Melinda, have donated substantial amounts and they continue to donate. Yeah, so what so can we conclude, mean, you know? So this is a right. tense, you know, this is something that begins in the past and continues until, until when? Now. There you go. So I got you to say it. It's different when you say it than when I say it. Right. That's inductive approach, okay? All right, and then show them the structure. Adult students love the structure. They love all these rules. You have <laughs> the examples here, yes? Then you, you, go, you can explain to them what the concept of past participle is, and you can explain to them that you have regular and regular past participles and whatnot. You can show them some, you know, of the most common past participle forms. You can even go with the good old timeline, you know, the, the, this is something that old school teachers, we all use this on the board, you know, but the problem was that first we would do it first and then we would mm -hmm. go into the context. Now, a lot of teachers tell me, oh, but now you're telling me that I have to teach grammar without the rules? No, I never said that. What I'm telling you is change the order. Yeah, but the order, you know, of, of, of the factors that does not, this is not math, okay? <laughs> this is how things are presented will have a different impact on your learning patterns. Okay, and then you can explain the sentence in four, and then you can go deeper into this thing, and then you do the practice. And there you go. Nice and simple, straightforward, right? All right. Now, now that we've uh, covered, you know, different aspects on, on, on how to do this um, online, Let's say that you're really, really, really old school. Well, very simple. I mean, grab, I don't have a blackboard or grab a, a whiteboard and, you know, write examples. 
Something as simple as, uh, or maybe on a Word file, you have, you know, previously prepared examples. Uh, play with PowerPoint. Play with the tools that I showed you last week, remember? Play with the stuff, you know, with the different uh, presentation tools that we have at hand. And it's something as simple as writing a whole bunch of sentences in present and a whole bunch of sentences in past, you know? I work at my office every day. I worked at my office yesterday. Yes. I play with my children in the evenings. I played with my son last night and asked them, what difference do you see? Oh, the verb, yeah, but aside from the verb, what other difference do you see as of when the action happens? Oh, okay, the first example says every day, the other one says last night, exactly. So we know that, we already know the you know, actions that, that are simple present are actions that repeat themselves, right? Or show some sort of routine. But now I'm talking about last night, last week, yesterday. That's what I'm talking about. This is not rocket science. You know, it's, it's, it's not asking students, you know, to, to lose a brain cell. It's basically asking them to become more engaged, right? Now, before we continue, do we have any questions at this point? I'm going to break the format a little bit and it's okay. I mean, let's make it more interactive. But once you ask your question and unmute yourself, then mute your microphone again, all right? So, any questions at this point? I have a question. Yes, Marianne. And it's Mary. Um, is, would we be able to get this presentation in some written form? I love it. Uh, you mean the PowerPoint? The, uh -huh. Well, all you need to do is uh, write to my email, that, which I've shown you before, and I'll show it again at the end of the... Um, of the presentation, I'll be more than happy to send it to you. Good, thank you. Not a problem. All right. Okay, that being said, let's continue because now we're gonna to get to the goodies. What you guys love from this presentation is when I do all my research on week and I show you some really cool free access web pages so you can teach grammar. The web pages I'm going to show you right now are mostly for children and teenagers. For adults, it's very easy. For adults, you go to englishclub.com or you go to englishpage.com, as we said before, or you find some readings online or you find some reading workshops online. It gets trickier when we're working, you know, with younger students. We're working with teenagers and we're working with children. So let's talk about one of my favorite ones that I found this week and now has become, it's called Grammar Bites. And yes, it looks kind of intimidating. So, and even the website is kind of funny. Let's write it down. It's www.chumpchump.com. <laughs> and, and it's a really fun and engaging way, I mean, to approach, you know, grammar. And let's take a look at it, Grammar Bites, okay? Do, 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 do. Now, they call it Grammar Instruction with Attitude. And all you have to do is enter. And then you're gonna have, you know, researches for teachers, grammar workouts, exercises, mock, you know, you, you, you can actually download handouts and you have actually presentations, presentations that you can use, you know, for your different PowerPoints. Oh, by the way, uh, Marianne, one, one question. Which PowerPoint were you referring to? The one about the present perfect or, or the webinar PowerPoint? You need to unmute yourself, Marian. Okay, just just show me um, the, the webinar po the, the webinar um, PowerPoint. Okay, cool. Because I could send you the other one as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. So here we have you know misplaced modifiers PowerPoint, and it's going to download the PowerPoint into your computer, and then you can use you know these different PowerPoints or whatever presentations you may want to do, okay? Where did it go, where did it go? There we go. And here you have your PowerPoint that you can use for your class. So again, and it's very current, it's 2019. You have the presentation, you know, in context.
then you have the explanation and so on and so after okay so again super cool you can and you can actually edit these presentations okay and i mean you can really take advantage of all of these resources okay let's go back to oh my god i got lost where is it where is it where is it grammar bytes grammar bytes grammar bytes i'm just going to reach it manually it's a lot easier for me grammar practice Sorry guys, is that I have so many uh, web pages opened. Ah, well, let's do it the easy way here. Let's get back to the presentation, okay. And simply click on the link, come in. Okie dokie. So we'll see in grammar bytes again. Yes. Okay. Cool. All right. So like I said, not only do you have PowerPoint presentation, you have YouTube videos, you have tips and rules, handouts, as I mentioned before. So again, this is one of these really cool web pages where you want to explore and you want to access all of these resources and everything that you need to teach grammar online is basically here. All right. That's why I put it first. You have exercises, you have interactive exercises, you have everything and anything that you could possibly want for, to have, you know. And, and you have them, you know, by, um, you know, by, by different topics and you can actually have the exercises coordinated with the handouts. If you notice over here, you have the interactive exercise and you have a handout that you can previously send to your students. They can print it out or they can download it. They can work the handout and then you work you know, on the interactive exercises. So it's really, really cool, all right? So I would say that, that this would be my top pick of, of the web pages that I'm gonna show you today. Road to Grammar is another cool you know, web page because you have quizzes, you have extra practice, you have games, downloads, contact, and it's a little bit better organized you know, in the terms of the topics that you're gonna have available to you, okay? Now, this is the web page. Uh, the web address is road to grammar, one word, road to grammar.com. Here, you're going to have also vocabulary, you're going to have quizzes, you're going to have games, you have resources for teachers. Okay. You have stuff that you can really, I mean, look into. And then, of course, I mean, you have all these quiz topics where you can actually, you know, go into the quiz, drag and drop, or you can download the handout and you can even, you know, have some notes where you have, you know, the basics and all the presentation and where you can show the examples and where you can show the structure and whatnot. Okay. Again, this is roadtogrammar.com. All right, next pick. I actually did a lot of curating this week. Uh, I was going just to pick, you know, my, my old favorites, um, English page and englishclub.com, but, but as I kept finding, you know, cooler and cooler web pages, I said, I, I have to share this with the guys. I mean, it's really cool, okay? Where's my PowerPoint here? All right, this one is pretty cool. It's called Grammar Snack. This one is the, by the British Council. Um, your web address is going to be learnenglishteens.britishcouncil.org. And as you can infer, this is mostly appropriate you know, for teenagers. And let's take a quick look at it. Now, what's cool about this format is that you have the same characters, okay? Interacting, you know, all of the time. And I'm looking for it, I'm looking for it, Jesus Christ. Why am I having so much trouble finding my, ah, whatever. Again, let's just go into, you know, the, the link. All right, ah, that's why I couldn't see it because here you have to select, you know, whether you're going to go into advanced or you're going to go into intermediate, okay? 
and let's go into intermediate. And then you have, let's go into passive forms. And then you have these really cool videos. James, uh, the screen isn't moving. It's stuck on grammar snack. Is it? Is it like that for everybody? Yes, it is it's for me too. We're, just, we're, we're still on grammar snack. Okay. Um, okay, are you back with me now? Can you see me? Yeah. yeah. All right, might be, might be a glitch on Zoom. Um, I'm going to go. Yes, thank you for letting me know. Mm -hmm. That would have been embarrassing, you know. <laughs> okay, here we go. How about now? Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. Again, learnenglishteens.britishcouncil.org slash grammar. You got it? Very cool. Okay. So again, I went to intermediate grammar and I had chosen, well, Actually, let's go into present perfect, simple, and continuous, or passive forms, actually, whatever. And then you have these really cool videos that you can actually, you know, blow up the screen and make it, you know, the whole screen. And before you're sharing with computer sound, making sure that we have the sound, and you play the video. That's why it's called Grammar Snacks. So Sophie's in China for work and phones, home to tell Oli about her trip. Hello? Hi? Can you hear me? I'm outside the hotel. My room is being cleaned. It's a bit noisy. Yeah, I can hear you, Mum. How's China? Amazing. I'm in Zhangjiajie. Where? Zhangjiajie National Park. It's been used in a lot of films. So again, it's been used. What's based? I mean, grammar and context. And it's a really cool format. Um, the only thing that is that if you're into American English, then you're going to have to get used to the fact that this is British English. I mean, this is the British Council, of course. And you have a whole bunch of videos. But not only do you have videos that when you scroll down, you're going to find, you know, photo captions, you're going to find games, you're going to find all sorts of resources to make grammar engaging. So this is the wonderful thing about teaching online and using technology. You know, back in the classroom, uh, back in the day, one of the toughest things was to figure out, you know, do you have any workshops on the present perfect? Yeah, I have, a, I have this one. Okay, I got to go make the photocopies. Oh, oh my God, the same one again? That's the only thing I have. Well, my class is in 30 minutes, so what can I use? And then you have to become, you know, an artist and then figure out, you know, how to do, you know, nice illustrations or find the correct, you know, VHS tape. If you're really old school like me or, yeah, yeah, I did use VHS. And I, I remember using, you know, uh, recorded episodes of Friends on a VHS. And then, then trying, yeah, right, Natalie? <laughs> and then trying to find the right, you know, part of the video so I could introduce the grammar. I mean, it was horrendous but you know that's the way it was back then and we made it work with very limited resources and we managed to engage the students so now look at these web pages it's all there for you i mean there is really no excuse all right now let's get to another one of my picks for this week again grammar snack and our next one is called grammar gorillas well, this one I kind of identify with. I kind of look like this guy over here, you know, but with a much bigger belly, of course. And Grammar Gorillas, it's another, you know, fun web page. And, and again, I cannot emphasize enough the, the, the fact that you want to find resources that are fun. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Let's go straight to the web page. Hmm. Okay, Grammar Gorillas is basically, you know, a whole bunch of games that you can use to practice grammar or teach grammar or reinforce concepts, but it doesn't stay there. It has other resources down here, okay? And it has related contents and, and you have different games. How does Grammar Gorilla work? I mean, you need to make sure, okay, that you 
allow your computer to use Flash. If, if you're using Chrome or if you're using Mozilla, it's going to ask you, you know, uh, do you give permission for the Flash, you know, I mean, plugin or whatever. You get a little thing, just say yes, okay, on, on the Flash thing. Sorry, I got lost for a moment there. And then, you know, you can play beginner or you can play advanced, yes? And then click on the preposition. I hit a home run yesterday at baseball practice. Uh, is practice a preposition? Nope. Now, it says, at is the preposition. You clicked on practice, a noun. So it's a fun little game, I mean, that you can play. She click on the pronoun, me, and says, you're right. It's very simple, very straightforward, all right? And again, you know, it's fun to play with kids and, and maybe some teenagers or some adults might even enjoy this type of thing. Some adults might feel intimidated by the complexity of other web pages. I had, you know, uh, older, older students that enjoy this more. You know, I actually experiment with my mother. My mother is 83 years old and I torture the poor lady. And I'm like, mom, can you get online? You know, I mean, we call it a uh, techno grandma. She has a tablet, you know, she has a smartphone, she has a big tablet, a small tablet, a laptop. And of course, um, she's better than the most dangerous hacker at, at basically, you know, disconfiguring all of these things. So every single week she's like, son, you know I mean? Um, I don't know what I did. I, I just touched this and it's not working anymore. My God, I mean, Microsoft should hire her, you know, to destroy the competence or the competition or something. All right, next week. FunEnglishGames.com. Easy one to remember, easy one to uh, basically write down. www.FunEnglishGames.com. Now, this one has games, activities, worksheets. I mean, you have all kinds of stuff on this web page. Where's it? Where's it? Where's it? There we go. Access the web page now. Okay, so you can have, you know, I mean, uh, more traditional activities, uh, word, uh, word puzzles, um, quizzes, you know, worksheets, videos, fun stuff, language videos. I mean, you can basically find anything and everything that you could possibly need here. And the videos are not only um, related to grammar, you have vocabulary. You have funny videos. You have videos specifically for kids. You have English for kids, you know, down here. It's so, so cool, you know what I mean? You have fun stuff. You have topics that you can choose. You have tongue twisters, funny riddles, you know, English language facts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You get the point. Okay, I better move on. I always get excited with these things and then time just goes and goes and goes. But there's so much stuff that I need to show you, you know? All right. So. You got this one, right? All right, grammar for kids. This is one that I was um, really surprised to find um, on sites Google. Now, Google actually has a lot of resources that we never tap into because, well, we're not familiar with them. And that's where content curation comes in, what we discussed about two weeks ago. Let's visit the site. Now, well, in Grammar for Kids, you know, you have the Grammar Glossary. You pick the activity that you want to choose. And then, you know, these are actually um, resources that have been created by other teachers. Okay. This is not just one developer. So these are teachers contributing, you know, to the teaching community. And then here you basically have to, you know, go through the different resources, you know, do your homework before class. And, you know, you have some classes like Hangman, you have, you know, I mean, little Scrabble kind of looking games, you have uh, fill in the blanks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, drag and drop. Again, all you need to do is play around with the web page and, I mean, have some fun while you're at it. it it's kind of like, um, as a teacher, you know, when I go into these web pages, I feel like a kid in a candy store with a free pass. You know, I feel like I'm at Willy Wonka's, you know, I mean, chocolate factory. It's like, mm, what do I get? What do I get? Do I want this? Do I want that? I just want it all. So it's really cool. Okay. 
This one is called Grammar Practice Park. It's a really long, I mean, website name. So I'm gonna wait while you write it down. <laughs> it's a, a very straightforward. Um, I actually like, you know, I mean, um, simple resources as well, because you're gonna have different students with different tastes and, and different styles. So I'll keep on waiting. Sorry, I know that you're still copying because I observe you, you know, <laughs> when I see you doing this. That's another thing with your students, by the way. Um, one of the recommendations that I always give during these webinars is be very patient, okay? Oh, I see Karen is back. Karen, I hadn't seen you there. How are you? Uh, cool, great to see you again. Okay, Ethan, welcome back. Karen, how are you? My God, it's like a group of friends getting back together. I, I do see some new faces. Welcome as well. And I guess we'll get to know each other, you know, as we go week by week. All right. Natalie, we got it? All right, awesome. Here we have, you know, I mean, some very, very, very basic games. Um, Let's go with the basketball example. Click to enable Adobe Flash Player. If you get this um, message over here, well, just click and then click on allow. So, click on the correct choice. Okay, glasses. Common noun, proper noun, or not a noun? Well, I'm gonna click on the incorrect answer, okay? Oops. Now I'm gonna click on the correct answer. Simple, straightforward, fun. And then, again, it's like the analogy that I showed with basketball. That's why I wanted to show you this one in particular, you know? So the student will get his or her uh, opportunity to self-correct. Friends, come on now. So on so of course, you have other games, um, match-up games, yes, you have uh, drag and drop, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Match-up games are games that I actually play with my three-year-old kid. And, well, he doesn't know yet how to use a mouse, so he simply points, you know, to the screen. And he gets really excited, you know, when he gets the correct answer. So, these are the type of activities that, you know, you, you can use with younger kids or even older people. I mean... We all enjoy playing games, right? Okay. So again, you know, really long web address, but well worth it because it's very straightforward, very cool resource. Okay, this one is super cool. I love everything that the BBC does. And these guys, uh, I remember on one webinar on teaching listening online, remember? I showed you this really cool site by the BBC where you could get podcasts and all kinds of activities. Well, turns out that this one has daily lessons. <coughs> Excuse me, I wanna drink some water here. This one has daily lessons, okay? And it has really, really, really cool uh, resources, okay? And make sure that I'm sharing the right thing with you guys. Yeah, cool. All right, welcome back. Well, it says welcome. It would say to you, welcome, it says to me, welcome back, because evidently I was playing with this thing. And then you basically click on start learning. Now, why is it called bite size? I remember um, talking to you guys about, you know, breaking down the subject matter, breaking it down into manageable bite size. I, when teachers ask me, how do I teach this concept? This is so complex. I said, well, how do you eat an elephant? If I serve you an elephant, how do you eat it? Can anybody answer that one for me? One bite at a time. One part at a time, yes. You start yeah, with the tail. Yeah. You start with the tail, then you eat a toe, then you eat the other toe, and before you know it, you know, you ate an elephant. So <laughs> I know that's gross, but it's a good example. So you can pick different topics, yes. You can actually choose the language. I mean, they have uh, different languages over here. 
you have primary catch of lessons and then you have all sorts of different activities over here and what you want to do is explore this thing just like i showed you before explore the different activities i'm not going to go into it because i still got a couple of things to show you and then you know i want to really get into the you know discussion part which is my fav favorite part of these webinars um you can have extra resources as parents if you want resources that you can use you know with your own children you're going to find here practical advice and activities and then for teachers down here you have all kinds of different resources that are very current as you can see over here we have coronavirus back to school and you can actually have the video transcript okay okay it's not available in my location it might not be available in some countries uh, for some reason it was available for me yesterday but I mean play with it explore it you know make the best of it if it's not available then go to a different video or a different resource right okay Let me see how many more I got so I can okay good okay last but not least I mean we have sorry we have ESL games plus www.eslgamesplus.com this one is actually I would use the word cute no. it is it's very cool for little children I actually use this one with my child when my three-year-old kid and we were having a blast together and not only do you have ESL games where you can you know teach grammar but if you're one of those teachers that maybe you work at an elementary school and yes this is a TEFL you know I mean conference and this is a TEFL webinar but as teachers of English as a foreign language or teachers of English students of another language TESOL sometimes we'll be required to do a little CLIL. CLIL is content language integrated learning uh, for those of you who are not familiarized with the concept. Now, in most schools, if you work in a forest school, not a language institute, forest school, the, cu the curriculum will have, you know, connected, you know, content in which in the English class, you will use culture, you will use math, you will use science. And then in the math class or the science class, especially in these bilingual schools, you know, in, in foreign countries, you'll be expected to teach, you know, basic science in English, basic math in English. So here, you know, I mean, you find all of these resources. Of course, we're going to concentrate on ESL games. We have sentence, sentence builders, uh, crocodile war games, pirate war games. I mean, a whole bunch of things. You have crosswords, adjectives. Okay, let's wait for it to load. Side so uses cookies. And you know, it's going to be also um, use a flash animation format. So you roll the die. Choose the correct answer. And this would be, you know, a cool example, you know, of uh, CLIL, Content Language Integrated Learning. We have math here, but we actually concentrated on adjectives, right? Five plus three equals eight. That's, it's not difficult. Uh, is it happy? <laughs> the crocodile just bit me. <laughs> is it easy? Oh, back to square one, I have to roll the die again. So I mean, even put some adults Choose that the might correct be into, answer. you know, he's, Okay. Choose the correct answer. You can repeat the question. You can pause the game. And then you have, you know, yesterday I was playing this really cool game. Um, for some reason, you know, my brain gets blocked sometimes when I'm doing these things. Uh, it, and it was really cool because it was these little bubbles, you know, just floating up. And this would be cool to play in a tablet or maybe a touch screen. And the answers were inside the bubble. So to get the answer, you had to pop the bubble. And then you have all kinds of stuff here. All right. All right. And question time. Okay, guys. Who would like to begin today? 
That's always not everybody at the same time, please. <laughs> okay. A little help here, I mean. I'll go, I have a question. Yes, go on, Mary. Actually, Mary Alex, you got, Mary it, Alex. You got it right the last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that I was swallowing saliva in that moment, you know. Talking for an hour really does wonders to your throat, Mary Alex. No, that's okay. I, I forgive you. Okay, quick question. Um, I do mostly private tutoring, and I'm gearing myself towards, you know, preparing to tackle on a classroom setting, and I'm not there yet, and that's why I truly appreciate all your presentations. So these, all these websites, you recommend them also for private tutoring, correct? Like if yes. you're working one-on-one, -on -one, right? Yes, of same, course. same concept. Now, let me ask you this. This is kind of technical. So I have the screen, the website screen, which I share with my student because you, you recommended that last time that it wouldn't affect the correct. demand for my teaching, correct? If I were to share the website address, correct? correct. Still correct, right? Okay. Now, I asked the student the question while they're playing the game, and I do the clicking, correct? Because they don't have access. That's one Is that way. how it works? No, that's one way of doing it. Or you could give them, you know, the website address, have them go into, into the website and play. And then they could share the screen with you, and you observe them as they play, and oh, you correct them. Gotcha. Another way, there uh -huh. you go. Another way is to create the different rooms. Yeah, I'm definitely then, not there yet, <laughs> but okay. Yeah, don't worry. It's, it's not that hard. Um, it's it's go to uh, YouTube mm -hmm. and look for videos on creating breakout rooms on Zoom. It's basically three clicks. This is something that we did two or three webinars ago when I actually broke you down into different rooms. It's, it's, I know it sounds intimidating, but it's actually pretty cool. It would be like you in the classroom environment, just putting students, you know, in little tables, two or three at a time. And if you have, let's say, 10, 15 students, break them into five rooms and then give them the web address of the activity and then have one of them share the screen with the others or all of them, you know, go individually and play the game. I mean, the options are up to you. They're limitless. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that help? Uh, yes, that was very helpful because I didn't think of doing the reverse, having them share the screen with me instead of the other way around. Now, if you're working on Zoom, if yeah. you're working on Skype, they can share the screen. If you're working on Zoom, you have to give them permission to share the screen. And all you need to do is click. Let me see if I can share the screen with you guys, the presentation. It won't let me share the presentation per se. Okay. On, on Zoom, you're gonna have you know your, your list of participants on your right-hand side. Mm -hmm. yes? And okay. then when you click on your list of participants, you're gonna have a little uh, menu that says more. And in that menu, you have a spotlight video, make host, allow to record, so you can allow them actually to record the, the session, mm -hmm. but you can make them a host. And when you make them a host, like a co-host, then they can share the screen. And you can do this with no limit. You can make all of them co-hosts or whatever. So it's just technical issues. Uh, Google Hangouts also has, you know, it's little technicalities. Mostly what you do is you go into YouTube and you find, you know, the, the tutorials. And, you know, they explain to you how to do it. And, and uh, for me, it was hard at first because I mostly use Skype all, most of my life. And the company asked me to use Zoom. But as I learned how to use this platform, you know, I found out it was really cool. And for business purposes, I also use uh, Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams is also pretty cool. And it's 100% free. Zoom, you have to pay. Microsoft Teams is 100% free. So again, it all depends on the platform, but all of them have the, um, the breakout rooms uh, feature except Skype, maybe. Okay. Okay, thank you. That was very You're helpful. You're very welcome. All right, cool. Okay, who's next? I have a question. Go ahead, Mel. Um, well, I actually have two questions. They're, they're not exactly related. They're not related. But the first one is about the, this particular lesson. Um, when you are just starting, and let's say you're doing it freelance, I got, and I have copied, and I'm probably gonna ask you for the PowerPoint presentation of the whole thing. What about when 
how you settle on an intro. You know, which of these great platforms that, that you have presented here, some are going to be more for adults and so on, but say you decide that you're going to do intermediate kids, for example. Is there any motivating? I, it's just a hunch, it seems to me, that you pick one of these one and just run with it and see how it goes. I mean, I can't. Well, um, I, I always have an issue. I have my mind. I don't. My mind goes fast from thing to thing, and I always need help. Well, don't overcomplicate it. Um, remember, we spoke about uh, one of our first webinars, and you were there because you've been to all of them, Mel. We we spoke about getting to know your students, right? Right. Conducting a survey and. Remember the one that we saw last week? Uh, we saw poll for everyone, and where we could do surveys and find out, you know, people's opinions and this and that. So, find out what your students like. Right. Ask them straight up front. If that doesn't work, then trial and error. When you go to a restaurant and you're going to try something new, well, how do you know if you're going to like it or not? Right. Taste it. Okay. <laughs> so right. it's going to be a combination of factors. Um, you need to find a platform that you're comfortable with, that you enjoy using, but also that your students use. So it's sort of like a kind of meet halfway type of thing, okay? okay. Maybe, maybe students love a platform, but you're really lost in it. You, you really don't enjoy it. They, maybe the format is a little bit confusing. Or maybe you do love a platform, but your students are not getting engaged. So you have to find that middle ground. And, and basically trial and error. Uh, okay. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. Uh, right. I've been doing this for 26 years, and every single webinar, I screw something up. <laughs> I mean, Natalie's smiling because she knows. I always screw something up. I, I can't find the web page, or I forget to activate the sound. And, you know, basically just roll with it and have fun with it. As teachers, we do not have to portray ourselves as perfect, you know, superior beings that basically float in the air. I like making mistakes. I, I actually enjoy making mistakes because it, Helps me to connect, you know, with the people that are that's, listening to, me, to my participants. That's a good thing. Okay, I'd like to ask you another question, which is it could be saved for another time. I'll but, answer it right now. No, no problem. Well, well, I don't know. It's not really about grammar. Um, it's about British materials. Um, years ago, I did an adult literacy program with the Brooklyn Public Library, and they were taking adult learners, some of them very old, um, up to fourth grade. Um, they had these readers, and I wish I had been a little less respectful and not let other prepare. They were from Britain. Okay. And they were great readers, complex enough for real life situations. After all, these were all adults dealing with real issues. Um, the British materials were really good, and I was looking for them this week because I thought if I could find them and I could share them, it'd be lovely. I don't know what they were, and you can't access the Brooklyn Public Library archive. They're not going to do that. It's their stuff. Um, do you know anything about it? I don't know how to research it. I tried. Great, just great readers at all. Oh, I don't know. Just... Uh, do you remember around what time this, this took place? Because I do have connections with, with the public. I can library. go look. I can go look at when I took the course and let you know. Yeah, um, just uh, pop me an email. Let me know. Um, basically, more information. I'll make a couple of phone calls. I'll research and I'll see what I, I can find out for you. Here. Excuse me. I think people here. Oh, gosh. Oh, people okay. here dealing with adults would really love to see. I mean, these were not necessarily for the faint of heart, you know, um, but they were but they were not terrible either. I mean, they were trying to teach people, <laughs> but they were just so good, just so good. All right, Mel, so I'll look into it uh, so we can move along. Yeah. And uh, as I said, just contact me through my email and actually we might find use Everything that every resource that we find, whether they're speakers or audios or transcripts, 
are resources that we can use to teach grammar. Mm -hmm. Any communicative, I mean, um, resource that we find, whether it's in audio, whether it's in print or in video, and this might be something interesting that we, we could use in a future webinar. All right, Mel? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, who wants to continue? What do we have? What do we have? I wanted to oh. ask a question. Yes. It's oh. Mary. Yes, Mary. Um, no, my question is, let's say I want to help somebody to learn past tense. Yes. How would I, and I guess I'm trying to, to figure out how would I find what website is there, are, are they in such a way where you can say, okay, um, past tense, this website would help with past tense, or this website would help with um, past perfect, or oh, no, are no, no, they no. all together? Exactly. And um, you just pick out which one you want. Yes, when you go into these uh, uh, grammar resource web pages, you're going to have a menu or a glossary okay. of terms. And in all of them, you're going to find, I mean, there are only 12 tenses in English. Right. Okay, voice, I see. You know? And there right. are nine tenses in mm -hmm. passive voice, and then you have parts of speech which are the eight basic parts of speech. And you're gonna find mm -hmm. all of these things. If you're going to go okay. into something more specialized, uh, I mm -hmm. mean, like uh, sentence inversion. Mm -hmm. uh, in front of the store stood he. Mm -hmm. Things like that, then you may find, you may need to find more specialized web pages, but most of these okay. web pages will cover um, the basic concepts. The basics, um, okay. There are questions that you need to figure out. For yourself, mm -hmm. um, I remember one one question that I love to pop to my to my attendees, and I'm going to pop it today. And we're going to make mm -hmm. it a contest. See who can figure it out. Because mm -hmm. when I was asked this question by my trainer 25 years ago, mm -hmm. I was like, oh! it took me three days to find the answer. But I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure that one of you will one of you will find it. I would like one of you to change mm -hmm. the following sentence from active voice to passive voice. Okay. Active voice, passive voice. For those of you who are not familiar with the passive voice, James is teaching the, the, the webinar, or James is giving the webinar his active voice. The webinar, uh, actually, you can do active voice. It's, okay, James gave the webinar, active voice. The, web, the webinar was given by James, passive voice, okay? Right. Now, this is the sentence that I want you to convert into passive voice. Soldiers. Okay, uh, please mute yourselves. Let me mute you all mm -hmm. for a second. Okay, there we go. Soldiers go hiking every day. Let's put it on screen. Soldiers go hiking every day. And this is uh, the type of exercises that I love, you know, uh, and it's a great example of how to generate, you know, higher order thinking skills because now I got everybody thinking, soldiers soldiers go hiking every day. They're probably looking at me like, James, so did you smoke something funny this morning? I mean, you can't convert that to passive voice. I can take this quiz, hiking, comma. Uh-huh. Okay, hold on. So, so I'll just go every day. Okay, so you said that hiking what, come on? So I'll just go every day. No, that's not correct. I have it. Go ahead, Mel. Every day hiking was done by soldiers. You actually got it. Hiking is done by soldiers. Oh, I'm impressed. Hiking is done by soldiers every day. So the rule of thumb here is that whenever you have expressions with go, go hiking, go dancing, these are things that you do. So when you turn them into passive voice, you have to use do instead of go. So if I say I go dancing every evening, dancing is done every evening by me. Pretty cool, huh? So these are the type of things that I love about grammar. So. I'm sorry I, I deviated maybe a little bit from your question, um, Mary, but I mean, again, for this particular type of things, you may need, you know, a specific web page or 
reach out to your fellow teachers and well, lo and behold, Mel Gay was the answer. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay, cool. Thank um, you. I think, can I just say, I really love what you just said here about people asking each other. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, you we, know. but this is a good example of what I just told you uh, about mm -hmm. inductive grammar approach and creating community learning, yes, student-based mm -hmm. learning, co cooperative learning. Mm -hmm. it, you don't have to have all, all the answers all the time. You don't have to be, you know, the provider of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And then when you pop, you know, problems like this to your students, then you're going to have your own Melanie, you're going to have your own Natalie, you're going to have your own Aaron, you know, mm -hmm. who are going to help, you know, create that learning. And, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, I, I want you to really get that in your head, you know, move away from the teacher center, you know, format. Student center is so much more and you can learn so much. I mean, mm -hmm. you'd be surprised as a teacher with 25, 30 years, you know what I mean, of experience, you can learn so much from your students, even when they're little kids. I mean, little kids would, would surprise you. I remember one time um, I was in this class and, <laughs> and then we're talking about, you know what I mean, the, the birds and, and, not the birds and bees, sorry, birds and seeds and flowers. And, mm -hmm. and I said, well, it's about the rain. So what happens when it rains? And one of the tiny little child, you know, five years old, he says, well, you know, when it rains, um, plants grow. And then, you know, I mean, and then, then, then the, the, the plants grow and then they grow more and then you have fruits and, and then, you know, you have seeds and I'm like, uh, okay, but where do the seeds come from? And he looked at me very seriously and said, teacher, from the seed store, from the greenhouse, you go and you buy them. <laughs> And I was rolling. I mean, I was rolling because I, I didn't see that coming. You know, I, I got sucker punched. And what am I supposed to say? He was right. You know, so these are the really cool moments uh, when you never know what they're going to come up with. Same thing happens with inductive approach to grammar. And, and the way that they figure out these rules, the way that they even surprise you because the, the example that I use with Bloom's taxonomy, if any of one of you is familiarized with Bloom's taxonomy, mm -hmm. I bet that you never heard such a very short, simple, concise, and accurate explanation. I didn't that was make the that best. one. No, but I didn't make that one up myself. I actually learned that in one of these seminars where, where I was trying to figure out, you know, I was like all of these words and okay, so different dimensions, cognitive thinking. And there was a young teacher, very young teacher, maybe Aaron Sage, more or less. He said, well, Let's look at it in a simple way. And then he went boom, boom, boom. I was like, whoa, wow. <laughs> and of course, I mean, I borrowed this concept and that's how I explain it now. And then, and that was one of those moments when, when I realized simple is better. Mm -hmm. Like somebody would ask a teacher, you know, teacher, what is literacy? Well, literacy is a complex system of interpretation of symbols and abstract concepts in which, well, you know, combining these different symbols from a semantic point of view and blah, 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 blah. And then they ask the other guy, you know, like, what is literacy? Well, it's to be able to read and write. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Keep it short, simple, mm -hmm. and stupid. Mm -hmm. I always said. And then, I wanted to ask a question, if I may, please. Yes, of course, of course, by all means. Is there anybody on the, on the um, chain that would like to, I just wanted to get some ideas from others how they structure their classes. I'm now getting started with this. And I just kind of needed some help, like how they start their lesson and support, just for support. Yes, of course. I mean, there are many ways that you can go about this. You can join mm -hmm. webinars. If you, if you want to join people from this particular community right here, uh -huh. what you can do is send out a chat. If your chat, is, uh, if your chat box is activated, mine is not. Okay. Send out a chat with your email and then teachers that mm -hmm. would wish to get in touch with you will get in touch with you. And then okay. you can create, you know, a little community. Okay. All right. Um, and, 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 and that's basically all it takes is basically reach out or, or go out into the forums or um, you can create a blog and have people, you know, visit you, exchange mm -hmm. ideas. There are so many ways. All right. There all you go. Right. Thank you. You're very welcome. Hello, James. Hello, Aaron. I was wondering uh, what happened to you today. 
Uh, yes, uh, I'm doing great. And I really appreciate all the requirements or all the websites that I uh, lear learned from you. And of course, uh, in order for us to uh, teach grammar, it has something to do with uh, our culture. Because there are some, because based on my experience, uh, there are some students who cannot relate uh, to to some grammar topics because it is not related to their uh, culture or tradition. So like what? Have, um, for example, if we're talking about uh, when we teach grammar, it has something to do that they can really understand mm -hmm. based on their personal. Uh, personal realizations mm -hmm. or okay. uh, or something that uh, that is what is happening uh, on their lives okay mm -hmm. in order for us to uh, give uh, give an example of sentences based on the grammar point that you mm -hmm. discussed to, uh, discussed to us James huh? Aaron are you from the Philippines oh yes how did you know um... <laughs> I'm surprised. I knew it. Yeah. I knew Aaron is a Filipino. I'm a Filipina too. You are? Oh, I don't... Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Come yeah, I'm here oh, in New York. You know, yeah. you know, I, you know I, some I, Filipino okay. words, ano okay? Ang, ano ang Marian? <laughs> All right. Okay. Cool. Wow. All right. So, okay. uh, Aaron, um, is that the whole question or? Uh, something something to share because uh, Marian, uh, Marian said to us that uh, if there's something that we want to share uh, to her, and I'm one of the volunteers that I want to share to her about yeah. about awesome, the things that yeah. we want to to um, some ideas that we want to share to one another. Mm -hmm. okay, that is a good part. Okay. Thank you very I'll much. Happy to help Thank you, Aaron. you. No, there are some oh, okay, cultures. No problem. Thank okay. you so much. That is true. There are some cultures in which inductive approach will not be appropriate. Uh, in, in some Asian countries, because of their culture, because of the format and, and because of the dynamics in which they are taught, you might have to regress to, you know, deductive approach. You might have to go to the old way of doing things. And this is something that may happen. Now, remember that what I'm showing you here is a way of doing things that may be beneficial and as we discussed the benefits relating to higher order thinking skills but it doesn't mean that you have to do it you know mandatorily maybe in one particular culture it may not apply because of the context but what Aaron said is very important and, and, and we've said it you know in, in all of these webinars especially when we spoke about uh, that was the webinar on teaching different age levels remember that one we said that especially for teenagers the content has to be relatable which is what Aaron was explaining to us and relatable has a lot to do with pluriculturality with the culture itself with the reality that people live all right and that's why uh, when we select when we select you know I mean the different materials we have to take into consideration the context and that's fundamental and what is appropriate and what's not and also the approach remember that learning different approaches to teaching whether it's deductive or inductive, are basically putting more tools in your arsenal, putting more tools in your toolbox. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, I prefer to use, you know, this big screwdriver, which is my inductive approach, but sometimes mm -hmm. I may need the pliers to pull some teeth. And <laughs> Sorry, but that's the way I see it, which would that's be the deductive right. approach. And learning all of these uh, new techniques and approaches in, in, during these training sessions doesn't mean that you have to throw into the garbage what you already have. If it works, use it. And that's what I always said. But it's always best to have and not need than to need and not have. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Aaron, very much. Okay. Who would like to, um, I, I see a lot of open microphones. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to mute you all and allow you to unmute. Uh, when you, please, when you participate, please remember to mute yourself back on so we don't get all the background noise. Okay. All right. Um, who wants to ask anything? I see Natalie has been very quiet today. Mm. Karen, I haven't heard from you today. Erica, you're very quiet today too. I always enjoy hearing news from Brazil. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Okay, would anybody else? Oh, Stephanie? No? Karen, you wanted to say something? Yes, go on. 
actually um, actually never started teaching. I completed the course, and I'm finding it. I hope you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you fine. Yeah, so I'm finding the transition very very difficult. Not having any practical um, experience, so not knowing what to expect when I actually apply for a job. Last week, you said to us, go onto the website, have a look at all the schools. I did some of that, and I was I was amazed actually. It's, there's a lot of information there, yeah. and it's really, really helpful, as have these um, webinars been very helpful to me. But I still find there's that hurdle um, as to what to expect when I practically have to start teaching. So I don't know, yeah, I'm not sure how we can fill that gap. These, these webinars are obviously helping. They really are being helpful. And Thank you. I think I just need to take that step and jump in when I'm ready. Well, um, I remember the first time that I jumped out of a diving board. I, I used to do, you know, diving when I was a young kid. That was about um, 20 or 25 pounds ago. <laughs> it's a joke. Well, literally 20, 25 years ago, um, actually more than that. And what did I expect the first time that I jumped out of a diving board? Well, I was terrified. Um, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if it was going to hurt. I didn't know if I was going to land the wrong way. I didn't know if it was going to be cool, if the water was going to be cold, if the water was going to be warm. So basically, as terrified as I was, I had to take that leap. And why am I using this analogy? Um, I remember when I taught my first class. And I had to talk about relative classes of time. And I had no idea what relative classes of time were. And I'm saying, okay, December is the month when people celebrate Christmas. And it's relative because December is, is, is relative to Christmas, you know? <laughs> I did too. And then my boss, who by the way happens to be my current boss, is funny because he was my first boss 25 years ago. And now we're working back together. We were talking about that yesterday and laughing. Walks into observe class when I have to explain the grammar. Picture that. First class, young teacher, terrified out of my, you know, mind, did not prepare my grammar. I have to teach a topic that I have no idea what the hell it's all about. And then my boss walks in. It's like, um, I'm going to observe your class. That's the moment when you feel like your blood pressure drops. Like when you were a kid and you got caught, you know, with a, your hand in the cookie jar. Well, what did I have to do? Wing it. He was very gracious afterwards, you know, and he spoke to me and said, look, uh, you know, that was pretty cool and this and that. And my recommendation is, you know, read up on your grammar, you know, prepare your classes more, I mean, proactively and be better prepared. And why am I telling you all of this, Karen? It's scary. It's always scary. You should have seen me uh, two and a half months ago when I gave my first webinar and only five people showed up to the first one. None of you were there. And I was reading a script. You know, it was very awkward. I felt completely out of my element. Um, normally, I will speak in front of seven, 800 people. I'm, I'm, I give conferences around the world and I feel very comfortable, you know, in front of an audience with a microphone. I'm like a child with candy. And then the first time that I had to sit here and do this, I was terrified. As I didn't know what to expect, right? But what happened was as these webinars progressed and I decided to relax. I decided just to be myself. If you notice, I don't read any scripts. I basically interact and I make mistakes and I goof up and maybe I say some corny jokes. I mean, it is what it is, but I get more comfortable as I get along. Not afraid to make mistakes. Like I always emphasize on that and you will be fine, Karen. You will be fine. Um, it's like somebody asked me the other day, what book are you reading? I'm reading Great Expectations. And how is it? It's not what I expected. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a little literature joke. Don't expect anything. Expectations will only create anxiety. Basically, take the leap. And as you experience, you know, all this wonderful world of teaching, you will basically, you know, adapt. Humans are very good at adapting. Just be yourself. That's my greatest advice to you. Learn the concepts, watch different speakers, watch different teachers, but don't, don't try to emulate any of them. Just be yourself, be very spontaneous, okay? Can I say something? Yes, of course, Mary. Karen has, has, has verbalized 
um, very, very effectively what I wanted to say. And that's why I had asked that question um, where I can get help. Um, and of course, Aaron and Teresa, um, they were gracious enough to say that you can, I can communicate with them because just like Karen, after you've completed the course, you wonder, well, how do you take that leap? How do you jump off? Like, like you said, take that first plunge. And this is where my hesitancy has been. And, and that's where I need the help as well. So it's nice to know, and I, I, I verbalized this because I wanted Karen to realize that she's not alone. There are others on this thread that are like her who just feel the apprehension as well. I'm gonna tell you a little secret. I always get anxious before these webinars. My wife tells me every Friday evening, but baby, you've done this so many times. I'm like, yeah, I know, but what about if I don't record the session? Uh, what about if uh, the web page, you know, crashes? Uh, what about if this? And, and you know, my hands get cold. And, and you might think, you know, James, but I mean, you look so comfortable, you know, and you do this all the time. And no. <laughs> and every single day, you know, one hour before the webinar, I'm sitting here and I'm double checking and I'm triple checking and I'm making sure that the web pages are open and, you know, do I have anything on my teeth, you know? <laughs> All of these little things make you anxious. It's human, it's normal. I mean, I've been doing public speaking for 20 years now. And, and every time that, that I get in front of an audience, that moment before, you know, I mean, that right moment before I drink water and I swallow and I'm like, <laughs> Okay, you can do this, you can do this champ, you can do this. But the moment that I jump in there, just like when I'm here in the webinars, all that anxiety just goes away. I took the plunge and as I'm going down, I'm like, ah! and then well, actually this is pretty cool. It's not as bad as I thought. So again, many of you feel this way, don't feel alone, I mean, you might think that I don't relate to this. Of course I relate to this. I relate to this every single Friday evening or when I have to give my conference sources or even when I do my private classes, I still teach. And well, I, I mostly teach um, business English and, and you know, and, and because I'm also a business manager aside from being a teacher. So I like to, you know, mix both of my passions. And I get anxious when I'm talking to the CEOs or my clients, you know, and we're doing a Harvard business review and these guys, you know, are tycoons. And, you know, we're talking about the economic history of the United States and the developments that led the United States from the roaring twenties to the great depression. And it's terrifying because I'm afraid I might make a mistake or I might say something, you know, that is not accurate, but that's what makes this also so exciting and so much fun. The moment that you don't feel afraid, the moment that you don't feel nervous before doing this, that's the moment when you become a mediocre teacher with all the respect to all you out there, okay? With no mean to offend anybody. Overconfidence is a killer. When you are too much in a comfort zone, that's when you stop worrying, that's when you stop trying, and that's when you start messing up. And that's when you begin to wonder, what am I doing wrong? I'm so good to do this standing on my head, you know, I mean, prepare class, me, please. <laughs> what do I look like to you, like a rookie? Oh, come on. And you know, I mean, that's how Mike Tyson, you know, got beat to the ground. He was the greatest champion of all time. I'm talking boxing here now and he got overconfident and then some guy just came one day and wax, you know, whacked him down and he was like, what happened? So it's good to feel that anxiety. I love to feel that anxiety. I, I love to feel that nervousness. Uh, I love to feel, you know, that, that terror, if you may, sometimes before jumping into something new because it makes it so much more rewarding when, when, when I get it done. And it also helps you connect with the students. It is like, uh, like when I see my, my wife running from a cockroach, I say, baby, the cockroach is more terrified of you than you are of it. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, Sometimes um, remember that your students are also anxious and you want to make them comfortable and you want to present yourself as a human being. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. I emphasize so much on this. 
and, and, and that's one of the things that as much as I try to do everything perfectly, you can't do things perfectly. And when your students point out that you made a mistake, then you say, thank you. Thank you for pointing that out to me. And that will create the connection and it will help you, you know, release the tension. And I'm overextending myself here, but this is a very important topic that affects all of us, okay? Experienced or not experienced? Especially when we jump, you know, into a new field. Melanie is, um, you know, she has a literature background and she has mentioned many a times and, and she's very literate. We know that she's highly educated. She has a lot of, you know, interesting things to share. And even she, sorry for using you as an example, Melanie, but even she has mentioned, you know, the anxiety of moving, you know, into this new field. And, sorry, Melanie, you need to unmute yourself. Unmute your microphone. Hey, it's just me. I'm, I'm glad of the education I have and I'm proud that I keep on doing it and that I'm learning all the time. But I'm not trying to be modest here. It's just true that there's so much that people who do what I'm doing, so much more that other people know than I do. That, uh, yeah. Okay, now that's just really what I'm saying. I don't feel, I feel like I'm in a way under the eight ball, but I, or behind the eight ball, but I figure almost everybody must feel that way and there you it's go. not a reason not to do. There you go. Thank you for sharing that with us, Mel. So, Hi, James. Yes. Hey, hey Jose. Hey. How are you, man? Joseph Furman. This is actually the first time I'm doing this webinar, and uh, I've really enjoyed it. Welcome. Uh, I was a teacher before. I'm talking about 15, 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I moved on to a different field. Uh, I'm trying to get back to teaching because I loved it, and I still have that, you know, teaching bug. Right. I recently got my uh, TFL. TSL certification, and uh, and this is why I'm I'm interested in this uh, in these webinars. I uh, just want to thank you for all the you know contents of the webinar. It's been great, and I'll be sending you an email uh, so you can you know share all that information with me. Of course. Uh, and uh, uh, speaking of what you're discussing right now, I mean even uh, even though I already have some uh, teaching experience in the past, I still f I, I also feel anxious about getting you know back on the teaching train. Back right? on the saddle, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's been a very long time and, uh, and, and I understand what Karen was talking about. I understand what, what my other colleagues are talking about. Um, now, uh, the way I approach things is um, whether I'm gonna be working for, um, if I'm gonna be working remotely for an institution or if this is something I'm gonna be doing on my own, I generally, um, what I, normally do and that's something I've done in the past is I, I um, and one of my tools is I choose a textbook to follow to, to start with right so that gives me uh, that gives me a guide and it gives me a structure yeah a sequence right of course. yeah yeah and then and then I start you know from the ground up right based on based on a particular textbook and based on you know what depending on the level I'm going to be teaching whether it be Beginners, intermediate, advanced students. So, but I, I totally relate to what everybody's talking about because um, you know trying to get back into uh, teaching is just it carries a little bit of anxiety, especially well, I've done it in a while. Hey, I love textbooks. Um, it, it, the presentation tools that I showed you, I'm from different publishing houses. I, of course, I do show you mostly material from National Geographic Learning because I am. An international consultant for them and, and I have access to all of these you know wonderful uh, tools but I'm not endorsing their books I'm just telling you where I get the material from whether it's Macmillan or Pearson because I work with all of them um, you know Hamilton House whatever they all have these really cool materials and if you're gonna use the book fine that's fantastic because I do so but don't limit yourself to the book make sure that you use of all course. the resources right yeah, you just use it as a basis exactly. because there's so many, you know, contents keep changing and depending on uh, your students' background as well. Yes. You always have to keep changing stuff around. What That's I right. like about a book is that it's real. 
object in real time in real space you can put it on your kitchen counter and you can close it and even if it does need to be updated with stuff from the web there's a little bit of i'm old enough to really feel relief that <laughs> had a book all right I'm, that's I'm that's cool to, Thank you, Mel, for that. And yes, of course, it's like we said, what we feel comfortable with and what our students feel comfortable with. Uh, Jose, uh, and for those of you who are new, you can go to YouTube and go look for, are you seeing my screen? Yes? Yes, yes. Ty type in Global TEFL, just like it sounds. Okay. When you click on Global TEFL, you're gonna find our logo here. And you're gonna see some of the webinars. Just click on the logo, and then you'll see all of the webinars. And this particular one will be published uh, in about two weeks. So if you want to catch up with uh, all of these webinars that we've been doing, and you're welcome, more than welcome to come back next week, we will be talking about how to create a lesson plan around the story. Melanie has been anxiously waiting for that. I think Natalie too. Uh, so I hope I don't disappoint. Please don't set your expectations too high. <laughs> Remember, no expectations, no expectations. So, um, I would like to invite you, Jose, to visit, you know, our, our webpage and our YouTube channel, I'm sorry. And then you can, you know, watch some of these webinars and maybe catch up. Because you hear me mention the past webinars a lot. And this will help and also get familiarized with, you know, all the gang. You're going to notice that uh, on the last part of the webinars is all of us, you know, the same guys here sharing. And it's a really cool community that we're creating here. That's all great. Right. I will. Thanks. All right. So, uh, guys. I think that we have to stop now. It's always I overextended myself. Uh, I'm, I, I'm going to get a call from my boss right now saying, stop talking. <laughs> hey, I love doing these things. You know, and, and as long as you guys are connected and we're engaged, why not? Uh, can, can I share my um, information with Aaron just to get so that he can call me back on, on this channel? Of course. Um, through the chat. Or if you want to do it openly, it's up to you. It's a personal thing. Uh, okay. Again. Is, is Aaron? Yes. Uh, can can yes, I give you my um, my email address so you can get a hold of me and then I can, I, I'd have a question, some questions I'd like to ask, please. Okay, no problem. It's, d my email is D-E-L-O-R-E-S. Okay, I, I think you speak too fast. Uh, I did catch that. Sorry. D, as in dog. Okay. E, L, L, O, O, R, R, E, E, S. S. One five zero. One five zero. At hotmail dot com, and uh, and Teresita can take it as well if she's if she'd like to. So I'll repeat this for you guys. Is Delta, Delta, Echo, Lima, Oscar, Romeo, Echo, Sierra, 150 at hotmail.com. Is read Dolores 150, okay? Thank you so much. Okay, okay. just yeah. to thank you as I unmuted my, myself. I can't have any video. It seems it's not working with Zoom. Just wanted okay, to Alexander. thank you for this. I'll be, I'll be there on the, the next class uh, next Friday. Okay, very good. As always, um, thank you once again for coming back. Thank you for all newcomers. Please come back next week. We really enjoyed the sessions and stay safe. Uh, do not let your and guard you down. And the next class is next Friday? Saturday, it's always on, on Saturdays. Uh, um, the next class is next Friday? No, no, no. Saturday. Saturday. It, 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 Saturday. These, these webinars will always be- uh, oh, Saturday, okay. Yes. And uh, I do have some exciting news for you guys. We're going to have a new speaker alternating with me on and off. Mm -hmm. it, evidently, it's a different style. She's British, but she's fantastic. I watched her webinars, and it's going to have a little bit variety. So probably next month, you can expect to see um, another speaker. Do please keep coming back. Uh, I'm very sure that you're going to enjoy her webinars as well. And you'll be seeing me one week She'll be, you know, on the next week. I'll be on, and so on and so after. And we have a really, really cool list of topics that we're going to be covering for you guys. All right, I'll keep you posted. I'll let you know, you know, I mean, when when this happens. Uh, next week I'll be here. I already have a webinar prepared for you on 
for liter literature buffs, um, how to create a lesson plan around a story. And so we're going to cover everything. Uh, listening activities, grammar activities, communicative activities, writing activities, mm -hmm. everything around, you know, textuality. And this is one of my favorite topics because parting from a text, you can do just about anything that has to do with English, English language teaching. All right. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank for you. Thank you, so thank, much. You thank you so much, James. Thank you so thank much, you everybody. James. Thank you. Thank thank you. Everybody. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Thanks, Bye. Thank you, James. Bye. Bye. Uh, email Bye. me, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Okay. No thank problem. You. Bye. Put my email Bye. address. Bye. Bye. Okay. 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 Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank happy you, happy you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Very happy to help and share. Thank you so much. Karen, I expect to hear from you on next webinar. You totally, I mean, what happened to you today, Karen? <laughs> yes, you, Karen Alvarado. <laughs> I raised my hand, but you ignored me. Uh, did I? Oh, I'm. I'm, I'm I, I, I totally apologize. Well, uh, that's because he had new people like Marion on on the line, and 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 exactly. <laughs> oh my God! So, see, so my thunder. <laughs> bad James. Bad James. Bad James. Karen, what did you want to ask? No, I was I was just sad because I missed most of this webinar because the electricity, the power cut three well, times. But oh. you will have the recording of the webinar, so. In two I mean, weeks, right? Yes, and I apologize, Karen. I, I did not mean to ignore you. That sometimes I get so many raised hands, it's kind of difficult. Today we had you know, quite an audience. I was joking. I was kidding. <laughs> I actually get very thank nervous. You. Thank you, James. <laughs> so right. okay. Agmat, thank you very much. Okay, guys. Thank yeah. you Thanks so very much. much. Next week, I enjoyed it quite a lot. Thank you Thanks. so much. Me too. Thank you. Erica was Bye. quiet today too, so, so I expect much. you to participate next time. <laughs> you, you know, you tried to talk to me twice, you know, but you know, we have we have quite a few new people here today, so I let them, you know, introduce themselves and participate. But we are doing fine in Brazil. Everything Fantastic. Is okay. Fantastic. Nice. Thank you for that. Uh, just trying to, you know, reach out and say hello. Uh, Karen, you take care. Everybody take care. I'll be Thank signing off. Thank you, James. Have a wonderful bye. weekend. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you next week. Bye-bye. See you next bye. week, Aaron. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.